requirements for our program, you, you should just meet with an advisor and um, take a placement test. And then there's more information on getting started at this website. So, okay. Oh yeah. So now you know what, why horticulture? Well, there's jobs, they have opened up. I kind of blame it on baby boomers retiring or uh, because in the last few years, there are far more jobs than any employer can fill. Everyone is almost desperate for people to work. And I think sometimes people have the perception it's a lot of hard work. There's different aspects of it. It's not that every day. It's not like you're digging ditches every day. But the trend is there is a lot of employment available. A lot of the government-related jobs, which tend to pay more and come with benefits. Um, those have opened up when they haven't in a long time. Uh, you can be responsible for helping keeping our environment green and healthy. Plants are really good at um, carbon sequestration. So we, we want to, we really, we maintain the environment. Um, so horticulture itself through it, we moderate light, temperatures, wind flow, water. Uh, <laughs> someone told me a story about how they had, uh, they bought property down in Maple Valley and it was surrounded by poplars and they cut the trees down. And she says, now we flood every year. <laughs> they didn't really think about why they were there. Um, views, there's a very old uh, saying, Love thy neighbor, cut not down thy hedge. It's from the 1700s. Noise, they can also be noise abatement and um, pollution. So it can make it, and they clean our air. And actually, the more recent studies have found that they do far more air cleaning than we, than they previously thought. So if you're interested in propagation, which is either seeds or cuttings or um, we don't do much grafting because it's a very, it's highly skilled, takes a lot of practice and a lot of time. Um, and then you grow and market the plants in the greenhouse and nursery. We have a greenhouse full of tomatoes right now and tomato plants, and we're getting ready to um, sell those. And we do that each year. It's just a little different this year because of COVID. Uh, so another aspect of horticulture, identify plant material, design, install, maintain, manage, and diagnose the issues of plants in the greenhouse and landscape. So part of what we're doing is setting up to display the plants in the garden center. And uh, the capstone class is right now working on a project. They're doing something for the Seattle Chinese Garden, installing some materials there. And most people, I'd say nine out of 10 people in horticulture work, they love being outdoors. Um, not when it's pouring rain and coldy, but anyway. Uh, so our program, these careers combine art and science. Most people are in the program are pretty much visual learners and highly created, but this really gives you a balance between physical and intellectual work. And so you can get immediate job skills. The pruning class is something you can go out and start pruning and charge good money for it. Um, so classes combine lecture, hands-on application, field trips post before COVID, and then projects. And we have started some, like I said, the greenhouse class and the greenhouse practicum class have been growing plants and getting ready to sell them. Um, the first year, there is a one-year certificate and a two-year degree, and then a two, or a two-year transferable degree. And the one year has a one credit internship, which is 55 hours. And what this does is it gets you, they're not, whether they're paid or not really varies, but there is not any, business or company that's been approached 
by a student interested in that area or approached by the career center that has said no to bringing on an intern for a certain period of time. You can also get the internship hours as well if you're working a job in the industry. And really the way people get hired the, these days is people hire who they know. So they know that you come to work, you're there and you show up again. Um, and what most students like is they learn through doing, through actually applications, because that's when you find out that it's, you know, what kind of um, glitches may come up or what works really well. And you get a really good idea of how much time and materials things take. So what do we do in classes? Um, we have student projects in the Southdale College Arboretum and on campus. Let me just get us to this is the website this project is a water feature and this is the synosium conifer garden and this water feature this structure was built by construction classes and the water feature actually took three or four construction classes and some students came back and took the class again just to be part of this project because it involved a lot of new skills with rock work. And then the Synosium Garden was is all plants that were donated by uh, Robert Fincham, and he propagated and grew these all himself. Uh, it was an Enum Claw, so it's supposedly the largest conifer garden um, in the West. And okay, so let's go back to the PowerPoint. There we go. So garden design, installation, renovation. We've done a lot of renovation projects over, um, over the years because gardens need updating. Uh, construction of hardscape features, like I said, they have built, uh, they've built like little, they has a little tea house by the renovated rose garden. And then there's another house. I call it the giraffe house because it's very tall, but it's another cedar wood structure students built. And um, also the rose garden to make sure that the roses would grow really well. Um, they did raised beds because our soil is pretty heavy in the Arboretum. So they built rock work to raise these beds. And um, they've also built like a block wall. So they've done a lot of different things. Irrigation installation, they installed the irrigation at the north entrance to the college. Um, also maintenance and repair, they open up the system every year and then close it down. And annual pruning. And retail garden center propagates markets and sells plants that students grow. Uh, we sometimes buy in other plants, but probably 90% of what we sell, we grow and students grow. So you get the experience of following it for about six months, or if you do the two years, then um, you get to follow it for about five quarters. So retail garden center. This actually just shows the greenhouse. There's a couple of the students. Um, this is in the spring. Yeah, we're just getting the annual started. So, um, if there is, does anyone have any questions? You can just stop me, I'll talk forever, but you can certainly stop me. This is one of the projects that was done a few years back. This was a renovation project. Um, another class years before had put in all these large, like eight foot tall grasses. And so, because they're very small beds that we basically went through, cleared it all out. Here's part of that process. And in the end, planted it. And then the irrigation class installed drip irrigation in the beds. So a lot of different experiences, like working with plant material, selecting plant material, redesigning, um, doing a site assessment measurements. Um, 
soil, testing your soil for what kind of conditions you have and what you're going to need to plant to work in those conditions because I guess this area used to be a gravel pit a long time ago. Um, the Arboretum is about five or six acres. And like I said, it, um, the Seattle Chinese Garden is just built northeast of the Arboretum. And they, oh, this, this weekend they are having, um, they have a number of events throughout the year. And if you haven't been, you should go. Um, it's open most of the time, but uh, not all buildings are open. Anyway, that's <laughs> on the side, but the class, like I said, this year, they're also doing another project for the Seattle Chinese Garden. And here's our greenhouse. This is very, very late winter, early spring. So certain things have started. It's not as full. Sometimes it's full. Sometimes it's, you know, almost empty. It, as of today, it's jammed to the rafters. <laughs> so, uh, and we'll sell those plants. So it's a hot house. And then just over here, we have a head house. And that is for transplanting work, but also it has um, a translucent siding so that light comes through. So we also used it as a growing area. So it's primarily instructional and working and growing to a certain extent. We do a lot of different types of propagation. This is a camellia species, um, camellia shrub that we started from seed. It's not the common one that you see. And so these are the seedlings. And this was um, trilliums that a student brought in to, for us to divide. She'd gotten it at her grandmother's house. So lots of, lots of propagation opportunities. And then we grow edibles. Here's a little bit more of the greenhouse. Here's some of the succulents we have. And then um, this is actually a part of culinary. So the foods department, they, they um, culinary department will be um, renovating and planting these with edibles so that they can use those. And we grew the edibles that they're going to use. And so they will, and they'll keep that going. They'll maintain that for themselves. And so here is one portion, but the main kitchens are over to this direction. Okay, education pathway, I guess I'm doing okay on time. So uh, there is an Ap Associate of Applied Science degree, AAS, and there's also an AAST. And the AAST is, means it's a transfer to a uh, four-year school and it takes seven quarters. And one of the reasons it takes seven is because we, oh, I should have put in a, we made it so that students are just taking three classes or 12 to 14 credits a quarter so that, and in the summertime they take the um, English psychology and math. So, um, so the AAS degree is, this is the two year. And so training in landscape design. So year one, they, they, um, the website has this inf information as well and a little bit more details and um, specific classes are listed if you just scroll down the page. Um, foundational horticulture. So you have, and a lot of people are opting for that these days so they can just get out and start working. What the year two does is you get to apply more of it and gain more experience through applications. And that's usually what people do when they're starting their own business, for sure. But, you know, it could be for training for other things. Um, so training, so in year two, landscape design, construction, um, greenhouse is year one, but we do uh, propagation in year two, uh, nursery operations, that's in the spring, irrigation systems, uh, plant problem diagnostics. So you learn about plant health care in year one and year two, we have a diagnostics class. It's a lot of fun. Pruning, plant ID, um, soils, and uh, 
there's a lot more. And so what we've done recently is to streamline the pathway. So year one, everybody takes the same classes and um, same thing with year two, we all take the same classes and we just distributed a little bit differently because this was what people were looking for. So it kind of expedites your process and we've evened out the different classes so that you end up with um, a really nice basis to start. So, so the fine work in construction firms, pest management services, a little less so, tree care, garden centers, wholesale nurseries, park maintenance departments and greenhouses. And like I keep saying, there's a lot of opportunities for self-employment. One of my students years ago, he had started mowing lawns at like 14 or 15 years old. And when I met him at about 22, he was married with a child and they were buying their own house on his maintenance business that he started mowing lawns. So, um, it's a good, it's, it works really well. And a lot of times what students do is they'll go through the classes and then work with someone else for a year and see, kind of see the year cycle and how things go. And you can learn a lot that way. So again, the website here gives more information and specific classes. <clears throat> so a certificate is one year, four quarters. So the second year is just three quarters. And this is that foundational horticulture. Um, plant ID, you get introduced to growing and growing is growing. You just learn how to grow the different plants, treat them differently, but what you need to know to grow, you can grow most things. Arboriculture, which is um, the, it specifically addresses woody trees and shrubs, but primarily woody trees. So if someone's in your neighborhood tr trimming trees and usually they have a chipper, if they're taking out a tree, they're arborists. So they go through, they take some classes and then once they, and then they do an internship with an arborist and then they can um, go for the certified arborist exam. And that is the International Association of Arborists, IAA. Um, okay, so, so the one year demonstrates horticulture information and a measurable commitment to specific goals and achievement. So um, this also, the the fourth quarter is English 107, Business 116, and then a five credit site class. So these are all required. Business 116 is business math. So applications math. And um, these are required by the state for a um, one year certificate and also part of the two year degree. So they, uh, these, find employment in landscape installation, maintenance of residential, commercial, and public areas, or with tree care companies, nurseries, and greenhouses. Um, and then again, well-suited to do your own business. And here's more information, including the classes that you take at this link. Okay, um, so how, what's your pathway? And I do have a sequence <laughs> that probably would have been helpful to put in here. Attend full time and you can complete one year certificate in, oh shoot, I've got that wrong. I'm sorry, it's not six quarters, it's four quarters for 50 credits. And the second year is seven quarters and 90 credits. Um, they, it's designed for you to start classes in the fall and progress through, but that doesn't always happen. And it's easy to work it out if you don't follow that particular pathway. I always suggest students go ahead and enroll rather than waiting for the cycle to start. Because 
it's how students have done it. And I've watched this for a very long time and it tends to work out really well. Only once did one student say, you know, that class I took would have made more sense farther down the road. <laughs> but, and that's a lot of students that only one said that. Um, yeah, you'll just be out of sequence a little bit. So it might be a tad tricky, but we work with you to get through approximate cost between equipment, this is like tools and like rain gear, books and supplies are up to $1,000 for the associate AAS degree. Careers, yes, it's a little redundant here. So designers, builders of residential and commercial landscapes, landscape and grounds maintenance, Greenhouse growing, nursery growing, irrigation, arborists, um, you know, public gardens, parks departments, water and land restoration. That's one of the newer areas of uh, landscape horticulture is restoration. Um, there's a lot of green belt areas in Seattle, especially that have not been managed well. And um, you know, you have the ivy up the trees and all of this. And so they are doing replanting and with natives and things like that. Um, and so just remember you're stewards of the land and you can really help with protecting our environment. Um, one of the things I should say, excuse me, we don't use any pesticides. Um, the only thing we use is rooting hormone and otherwise we don't spray any pesticides or herbicides anywhere in the arboretum or the nursery or the greenhouse. Uh, so that's, so we're in, we do use synthetic fertilizers because in containers that works best, but, and all the instructors have that softer, more earth-friendly approach to horticulture. And actually, I was surprised to learn from a student who works at a golf course, which is another area. And we have one of our students worked with Department of Transportation for years. They have one grounds crew. <coughs> um, wages can start anywhere at 16, up to 30, working for private companies, governmental agencies, they start like right off the bat. And a lot of people hire temporary part-time seasonal help is what they call it. So in high season of spring, summer, and into fall, and government agencies tend to have benefits included. And so this is often an opportunity to get your foot in the door and prove yourself. And a number of our students have now worked for the parks department because of that. They are. Um, Actually, a couple of them have, have really good careers with the Parks Department, a couple of the more recent ones. So if you need to contact me, I'm full-time faculty program coordinator. This is my email at school, and I'm pretty good <laughs> checking it each day. The advisor for our program, along with some other programs, but um, is Jamie Flajol, and she, this is her informa contact information. Also remember if you have additional questions, I've kind of talked too much, but um, about attending college or enrolling, there's gonna be additional help today from 4.30 to 5 p.m. Are there any questions? So this is, I have a little bit of extra information. You can attend full or part-time. You can take one class or you can take the three classes or um, full-time students have three credits, three classes with 12 to 14 credits per quarter. And our classes are offered one day per week. And depending upon the pandemic, our online hybrid and in-person, a few are offered in the evening, but mostly they're during the day. Most of the students work part or full-time. A lot of them have families. The age of our students is probably 18 to 60. So it's a wide range, probably average age is somewhere around 
28 to 32 these days. Um, it's been getting younger all the time. Uh, I could provide a list of equipment, materials, and tools that you need, and I covered the costs of those. Are there any questions? I have no plan. Okay. So one thing I'll say is uh, horticulture students are really nice people. We're on the north end of campus, so we're somewhat um, separate from the rest of campus and it's kind of our own little world and um, they're really nice people and students really enjoy getting to know each other and working with each other, very friendly environment. And they accept everyone who comes through. Um, the students actually get to be really good friends. And I'm, I know a number of them have long-term become good friends. So uh, I don't, I think I am just about out of time. No questions? Okay. 